Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. The Great Famine in Ireland, one of the biggest ones at least known to man. I wanna show you the weather ramifications with that, how the weather was tied into that, and take a look at how it was tied into the greatest myth, or at least one of the biggest food myths of all time, and that is corned beef and cabbage. Kind of an unusual tie-in on this. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Let's get back to this, the famine itself in Ireland. This was so horrific on so many levels, not just because the blight was bad itself, and this started back in 1845, but because of the political environment, the oppression, and so many that died, and that did not need to die uh, in this. Uh, sometimes blights happen, but a lot of this could have been prevented. Now, the initial weather circumstance, that has to do with the wind. Uh, the blight itself was spread by, by spores uh, that get up in the air and that could uh, travel about, but it also traveled from North America actually on a ship and eventually made its way toward Europe and into Ireland. So you had the blight that arrived in the 1840s and it arrived into this environment that was damp and mild in Ireland in which it could really feed off of easily. So a huge weather tie-in with this and how it traveled about and how these things travel about and just how it was able to uh, grow and expand so much. Plus the diversity of crops in Ireland was almost non-existent. They were so reliant on the time on this particular type of potato. And you could see uh, what something like this could do to the leaves of it. And then the root itself, uh, the potato itself in the ground, when you, you pull it up, it was just not, you're just not even able to eat this. So they relied so heavily on this. They did have other crops, but actually at the time, it's so sad, they were forced to export those crops. While they were going hungry, they actually had to export the crops due to the environment. And then the other weather uh, wrinkle in this, if you could call it that, the winter of 1846 and 1847 was so harsh, more typical than uh, normal. So in the middle of all of this, it was super cold. It was so cold in, in hundreds of thousands died, or at least tens of thousands died, upwards of 100,000. Hard to get the actual number in that particular winter that started in 1846. Now, in Ireland as a whole, the Great Famine, 1.5 million died. Uh, the numbers, of course, a little rough. Uh, there was so much going on at the time. So the population in Ireland, and this is so sad, in 1844, right before the famine started, 8.5 million people and then shortly after in 1852 in Ireland there were just 6 million people not that difference there not all of them died 1.5 million died but others got out of there and even after 1852 more and more uh, left Ireland so then you kind of switch over and people were leaving and they were leaving on these ships well they were getting on the ships hungry they were getting on the ships uh, sick and many of the ships that came from or went from Europe and came to the United States, they were nicknamed coffin ships because when they arrived, there were so many dead people. They had to get rid of people or not get rid of people. That's bad wording. Uh, the people that died on the ship, they had to bury them at sea. So many people died on these ships, but the ones that did make it, well, you had all these new immigrants in the United States. Two million new immigrants uh, that came to the United States even after the famine uh, as we worked our way through the 1850s, 1860s, and 1870s. Well, these folks that came and that did survive uh, the uh, harsh reality of the famine and the travel over here. Well, they brought their traditions with them and they moved into the United States. And at the time, in 1853 in the United States, uh, the Irish made up 43% of all U.S. immigrants. That is a huge number, and they spread. A lot of them arrived in New England, and they spread across and brought their customs with them. And of course, one of their customs was corned beef and cabbage. Actually, it wasn't at all. The, uh, the, if you go to Ireland, it's hard to even find corned beef and cabbage because it's not really a thing over there. That, that's the myth. Uh, what the, the meal was, the traditional meal in Ireland in, uh, for way back when, but in the 1840s and 1850s, uh, that, was, that was cabbage and bacon, slabs of bacon. But when the immigrants came to the United States, well, the bacon was initially expensive. And then with the, uh, the, the Irish arriving and wanting it, uh, that created a higher demand and it was even more expensive. And of course, these Im immigrants came over with next to nothing and they were poor. So they tried to find alternatives and the alternative they found was corned beef. So corned beef and cabbage 
is not necessarily from Ireland. It was actually a tradition that started in the United States. Things always seem to take a turn. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking the time to subscribe to this channel. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields.